Okay, I wasn't planning on doing this, but you know, it's there's so many things going through my mind right now that uh, I figured instead of doing multiple videos, just do a rant, you know, a big hodgepodge. Now, before we get too far into it, I will put out the obligatory warning that, you know, if you have tiny heart syndrome, if you are offended by words, leave, click away, go away, never come back. Now, I'm guessing, I'll, I'm thinking I'll do a title on this, something like uh, Black Pill Rant, because I'm potentially going to drop some stuff on you that you don't want to hear, but maybe you should really fucking think about and consider. Now, first off, uh, I want to thank people that did help me out here on the campaign on Gifts and, Gifts and Go. I ended that on Friday night. Uh, I think the total I got on it was like 3,800 or 3,200. It's somewhere around there. And it was only like 40 some people donated. Uh, the average donation that I was seeing was around $100 but there were a bunch of fives, tens, and twenties mixed in. Uh, thank you guys, it did not reach the amount that I was asking for and because it did not reach that amount, I'm not gonna do a specialty, you know, thank you video like I did last year when uh, that campaign exceeded the amount. I did a video showing you guys my personal equipment which I have since taken that video down. I'm not going to do anything like that this time because we did not reach the amount. Uh, the amount I received is maybe about half of what I actually need, but it'll help. So thank you if you donated. I do realize that times are tough and some people did contact me saying that they wish they could donate, but they're not in that much better condition monetary wise than I am right now so what what next here uh, this morning because it is Monday I came across a news story that Ukraine attacked into Crimea with US supplied weapons and they deliberately targeted civilians I'm not going with this bullshit of oh it was a misfire no this this, the particular equipment that was used, you're not going to have, you know, the chance of a stray round is extremely low. We're talking high precision, long range stuff. And reportedly, from what I'm hearing from other sources here, this attack was actually coordinated through intelligence from U.S. satellites and the forward observation was actually being done through US drones UAVs that were flying over to Black Sea at the time so this raid was done by the Ukrainians but very easily Russia can say this was an attack on Russia from the United States now reportedly Russia has said there will be retaliation against the United States what that will be no one knows yet there's a lot of people freaking out saying that oh it's going to be nuclear exchange it's going to be nuclear war no i don't think they're going to jump to that right away i think what we're probably going to see most likely is we're going to see more attacks in the united states we're going to see more of the munitions plants and technology plants in the united states mysteriously catching on fire or exploding because of utility leaks or whatever like we've seen out in New Jersey, where the plant that was converting over for production uh, specifically for Ukraine to produce 155 millimeter artillery shells only for Ukraine and not the U.S. military like they had been doing. Well, as they were tooling up, getting ready to do that, the plant had a massive explosion, an accident. I think we're going to see the same type of stuff. We're going to see industrial sabotage in the U.S. That's most likely what's going to happen. Now, is it going to be actual Russians killing Americans on purpose? 
I doubt we're going to see that, but truthfully, after everything we've done poking them in the eye and jabbing them in the ribs with the tip of the bayonet, you know, just to poke them and back away as they turn, or I would kind of say they're probably justified. Seriously. Now, this attack that happened in a theater up in St. Petersburg this last spring, well, the rumors that are coming out that I'm coming across in these conspiracy webs, people that are in the intel agencies in D.C. are letting it slip that that attack was planned and coordinated by U.S. intelligence agencies. Now, I can't confirm that, but that's, you know, that's the rumor that's going through on that one, too. So, you know, could we see the same type of thing happening in the U.S.? Potentially. We really could. And I know there's going to be some trolls that are going to be yelling, saying, oh, it's already going on. It's already going on. And it's the U.S. government doing it. I'm not denying that. I know damn well the U.S. government is deliberately killing people right now, and they have been for a while in the United States. How many of these school shooters have we heard the constant phrase of they were on our radar from the FBI? And then you find out later, well, they were more than on the radar. It was actually a retired, quote-unquote, FBI agent who was kind of coaching the person along. And then after everything's said and done, that FBI agent disappears until there's another shooting and then that agent reappears again and just happened to be, you know, an influencer to that person too. I, how many more of these events do we need to see? And, you know, are we really stupid enough to believe that this is a retired FBI agent at this point? Which, and we'll bring up another one. Nashville shooter, over a year ago, shoots up a Christian school. Oh, we get told we can't see the manifesto because it's the Christian parents of the victims who don't want the manifesto released. Well, and then everything that you hear, it's actually the government that doesn't want the manifesto re released. But they're saying that the families don't want the manifesto released. Well, you had a reporter here leaked more of the shooter's manifesto and their writings and stuff. And <coughs> <coughs> this round of stuff, just like the stuff that Steven Crowder had let slip a few months back, it's exactly what we said it was when the shooting happened. It was a trans shooter who hated Christians, hated being white, you know, just hates the patriarchy, you know, wants a, you know, anarchist government or a socialist government, you know, all the fucking things that we said that more than likely was going on in this person's head. We're finding out that's exactly what happened but they don't want us to read the manifesto to find out. Now, for those of you that say, well, that's okay, we shouldn't. I want to remind you, every other school fucking shooter for the last 30 fucking years, every fucking diary entry that they had, every manifesto was put out there by the media for everybody to read. So that, pe and the excuse then was, so that we could learn to watch for the warning signs in our own children. But with this one, and some of the others who have come out to be, you know, left-leaning trans and so forth, they don't want those manifestos to come out. They don't want those suicide notes to come out, because that's essentially what it is. It's suicide by cop. They don't want that information to come out, but they want it for every other one. And I know some people are saying, well, that's because it fits their narrative. That's why. No shit. I'm not that stupid. I fucking know that's the reason why they want those other ones released and not these. Ugh. Just to give you guys a heads up here, I am still recovering from the stuff from pneumonia. The illness is gone. 
but you know my lungs are still getting back up to capacity still repairing themselves so I, I do still cough and that stuff quite a bit so if I get into a giant coughing fit during the film you know what's going on here it's I'm still recovering from pneumonia this is taking way too long to recover so um, what's the next one we can talk about here Oh, let's go into left-leaning uh, ideologies. And this next one in particular I'm going to go into is, you know, a ideology that the media tells us is right-wing, but it's actually left-wing, okay? National socialism. Now, I still get people that, you know, send me messages that I don't know what I'm talking about. I need to listen to Hitler's speeches and hear what he actually had to say. Now, I'm going to fill you guys in on some stuff. Some of you probably already know or picked this up over time. Ethnically, I am German. I am German-American. I grew up in a town that was German okay we are talking a town here where of the population 90 to 95 percent was full-blooded German if you looked at the birth notices you looked at the wedding notifications and all that it was all German names all the time you know Hofmeister is marrying uh, von Braun this weekend you know um, Mueller and uh, Auf der Heidi are having a wedding on such and such. Or um, the, uh, <coughs> the Falkenbergs are, are were notifying everyone that they just had twins who they're naming Hans and Gretel. Yes, that type of thing did happen all the time in my town. You know, we had just as many German signs around the town as we did English. Okay, this was a town that during World War I, I shit you not, the U.S. Army literally deployed battalions around the town encircling it because the town officially gave its support to the Imperial German government in World War I. Old timers would talk about it in our schools, in the grade schools, about uh, during World War I when they grew up and they left town, they had to travel through army checkpoints just to go to the next town over. And as they're leaving town, they literally seen field artillery set up in the farm fields facing the town with the troops near the guns ready to fire at any moment during the entire time that America was involved in World War I. Okay? I had one person challenge me on this that, no, this type of stuff didn't exist. You know, you may think you're German, but you're actually English. No, I am German, okay? My family's ancestry on both sides is traced to Germany. Specific regions in Germany. Primarily, most of the family came from Prussia. I've mentioned this multiple times in the past. I am as full-blooded German as anyone born in Germany, and actually now probably more full-blooded because of all the refugees that are there now. Now, this same town, during World War II, it did give its support to the U.S. government. Then a lot of guys went and served in U.S. military overseas, but there was still a lot of support for the German government, and I do suspect that the Bund... The American Bund probably had a chapter inside our town during the 1940s. Um, now, by the time I was born in that stuff, German wasn't spoken as much as it had been even 10 years before. You know, there was still church services at the local churches that still did it, the service in German because there were still that many people that still spoke German fluently. We had, re we had regular German religious services along with English. Well, <coughs> when I grew up, 
we did have the Nazi supporting element was still in town, but we also had the veterans from World War II, the guys that went over that served in the US Army in Europe, that seen with their own eyes what the Nazis did, and they would talk about it, even though they had horrible PTSD from it, they would talk about it and they would confront these kids that were supporting Hitler. They would do it on the streets. If you had these kids that were trying to be edgy and that stuff, do a Hitler salute or whatever, start talking about, uh, you know, kikes and all that type of stuff, whatever derogatory term for Jew you could think of, these World War II veterans would confront them on the street and chew them out. This was a different era of America. That type of shit happened, okay? You had these veterans literally would grab the kid, slam him up against the fucking wall downtown and start telling him what he seen in Europe, liberating the camps, what they seen when they liberated villages that had been controlled by the Waffen SS about the ditches filled with massacred civilians. They would talk about the stench of the camps as they were liberating them. Seeing people walking around that looked like fucking skeletons because they had been starved and worked that much. So I don't want to hear nothing from you little shits that you think you know everything about Hitler because you read a fuck couple fucking memes and you listened to a couple speeches. I've listened to people who were there first hand that seen it with their own goddamn eyes what it was like. And when those guys came back, they let everyone in town know. And once that happened, then those people that did support the Nazis didn't support them anymore. When you would confront them, or I should say when those veterans would confront those people that did support them, during the war, they would say that they were deceived, they were lied to, they didn't know. You, know. you get the idea. Now, even in my own family, I had one grandfather that still spoke German a lot. And because I was learning German in school, we did used to speak German back and forth. And he grew up in a very strict, traditional German family. And in his family racism was a thing okay so when I was growing up I would hear the stuff you know the black jokes or as he called them schwarzes um, I would hear the Jew jokes and that type of stuff and everything and it was kind of humorous because that grandfather when he joined the army his battle buddy in basic training was Jewish that was the first time in his life he ever met an actual Jew, not just someone who was the butt of a joke. And he liked that kid. He was friends with him, and he still communicated with him decades later, and probably up to the point when he died. They used to write each other back and forth once in a while. And, you know, his attitude did against Jews definitely softened. But, you know, the old German racism was still there. And uh, according to my grandfather's sister, he had the same type of reality when it came to black people. You know, he grew up with all the jokes and that type of stuff about Schwarzes. And then he actually met black people in the army. And his attitude kind of changed. He's seen that, yeah, they work as hard as I do. You know, you're both soldiers and that stuff. You're both doing as best as you can. So, but even as I was growing up, he would still say the jokes once in a while because that's what he grew up with. So you get an idea, okay? That's what it went through, you know? That's the town that I came from. Now, because I have a German last name, when I joined the army, and I spoke German also just as fluently as English at that point. It's been a few years now. But 
I used to, in basic training and my first few units, you know, people would associate that because I'm German, then I must be a Nazi. Because I come from a town that is predominantly German. And I had to constantly fight off that stuff. And point out that, no, I am not a Nazi. I don't support that bullshit. And then I actually had a few times the morons that grew up in other places in the U.S. who were not German by background. They were the, you know, ones who supported Hitler and all that type of stuff. Yes, these people did exist. They were always in the woodwork. They were the extremes. Sometimes they would come up to me because of my German last name, could speak German and that stuff. They thought that I must support Hitler because, you know, everyone who's German must be a Nazi. And yes, this shit happened, okay? For you stupid 20-somethings out there. Yes, this shit did happen. And this wasn't that long ago. This was only like 30 years ago that this type of crap was still going on. Where there were still people that automatically assumed that because you're German, you speak German, you must support Hitler. No, I don't. I find him abhorrent. I find him a fucking moron. Have I read into him? Yes, I have. Probably more than you have. Hitler was a vegetarian. He despised smoking. He was left-leaning. He used to praise Karl Marx saying that he is the real founder of National Socialism. The motherfucker was a socialist, not National Socialist. He was Communist Socialist. But the media has twisted that shit over the years to, oh, he was right-wing, you know? No, he was left-wing. He was left-leaning. He was a socialist. World War II was just as much a war against different versions of socialism as anything else. How about this for you? How about you kids that think you know everything? Are you aware that Hitler was financed by banks out of America and Great Britain? Banks that were controlled by, oh my God, Jews. Jews were financing Hitler and the Nazi party even during the war. <coughs> and during the war, the Jews that the Germans were killing were different flavors of Judaism than the ones in the United States and Great Britain. I heard a, heard a phrase once from uh, Mark Kernke from uh, the Michigan Militia. Listening to one of his broadcasts, he talked about a Jewish baker that he used to visit and stuff. And he asked a Jewish baker about World War II. And the baker said, World War II was the big Jews getting rid of the little Jews. So the main sects of, sect of Judaism which had been taken over by Zionists, okay? It's, let's not get the two combined in here. Zionism is a extreme political ideology, not a religious ideology. And I have huge issues with Zionists, just like I do with communists and Nazis. Not with Jews themselves. It's the extremists. But um, they were eliminating their competitors in Europe. And then, as they're doing that when the war ends, they took the deaths of the people that they caused, they financed, and used that for sympathy for themselves. And what did you end up having from that? Well, you had the creation of the State of Israel, something I do agree with. I actually believe that should exist. But the State of Israel ended up being taken over, essentially, or controlled by Zionists. Zionists are Jewish political extremists. These are basically the Black Lives Matter of Judaism. Okay? That's the easiest way to think of them. And these are a group of people that believe 
no one other than Jews should exist, not just in Israel, but anywhere in the world. And these are the ones that, you know, typically you'll find, you know, when there's a quote unquote Jewish connection, it's a Zionist connection. When you actually check into it, you know, what's the ideology of the people behind it? It's not your average Jew, it's a Zionist. It's also Zionists who created communism in Russia with the help of the German government. Now, you know, let's not overlook that. The Imperial German government paid for Lenin to get into Russia. And then once he was in there, he used the Freemason networks, which I'm not going to go into that one too much. But he used the Freemason networks to get into power. He got his most support, his most radical support from the Zionist organizations in Russia. You know, they kind of folded into the Communist Party and then everything built out from there from the Red Terror. So it's not the Jews that started Communist Russia. It was Zionists. And I know someone's going to attack me, so well, what about the Bolsheviks? Bolsheviks was just what they referred to themselves as before the rest of the world called them communists. They referred to themselves as Bolsheviks. Now in World War II, the German troops referred to them also as Bolsheviks, not as communists. So, communist thing, that seems to me to be more of a Western term. It's sort of like when um, you talk about Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda as an organization did not exist in the Middle East. They did not refer to themselves as Al-Qaeda. Only in the West were they referred to as Al-Qaeda. <coughs> in the Middle East, they referred to themselves by such things as the Brotherhood, the Resistance, and that stuff. But in the United States and Europe, we refer to them as Al-Qaeda, which translate as the base. Kind of a rebranding by uh, Western media. So, now, what are my feelings on communists? The same they are with Nazis. As far as I'm concerned, they should be lined up on the side of the ditch and shot. It's extremist ideologies. And you know what? Hey, the Zionists can, use them, can join them too if they want to overthrow the country. Does that mean I want Jews to die? No, I don't. I've already stated here, and given my reasons, Zionists are political extremists. It's like Wahhabists in Islam. Okay? They are extremists. So, as far as I'm concerned, they're all trash. Now, another thing why I do not support the National Socialists, the Democratic Socialists, or any of those groups because they are after the same thing, totalitarianism. They are after the elimination of your personal liberties and government control. Because, you know, our democratic ideals screwed things up so much, we need to get rid of them, and the government needs to tell you how to think, tell you what to do, you know, needs to control every piece of your life. So you got a bunch of 20-somethings on the communist side that want to control everything because they're the radical idealists. They know what to do. And then over on the national socialist side, just a different side of the socialist coin, it's still socialism. They're saying, no, we should be the ones to do it. And we're going to throw in their racial purity too because we think there's too many immigrants. There's too many non-whites. Now, something I want to point out to the National Socialists on this. You guys say that you know what real National Socialism is. Okay, I've already given you my background, where I grew up and stuff, okay? I've given you some on my family stuff too. I'm probably more aware of what the National Socialists, the Nazis, believed and preached than you are because you are going off of Stuff that was literally packaged for you by people at the NSA to get you stoked up to believe that ideology. Wake up and smell the coffee, moron. Or excuse me, wake up and smell that soy mocha latte with foam. Okay? 
Fucking faggots. I said before, Nazism supported the rise of the Aryan race. The Aryan race is ethnic Germans, according to them. They considered everyone other than ethnic Germans to be untermenschen. So Poles, Slavs, even Brits were untermenschen. Depending on where you were and how, you know which group supported the Nazis party determined on, you know, which level of Untermensch were you? Were you the Slav or the Poles, you know, down at the bottom because they wanted to eliminate them? Or were you more acceptable because you're British because Hitler wanted to get the support of the British monarchy and the Navy so he could control their empire? <coughs> There's a lot into that. So, but only ethnic Germans were considered Aryans. And only Aryans were considered proper national socialists. I've told you several times now, I grew up in this shit. I know more of it than you do. I li grew up in a town where this type of stuff, you know, we learned it in school. We talked about it, not, you know, indoctrination into national socialism. But we were more aware of it because we were a German community. We refused to let the past be forgotten. We did not want to make the same mistakes that our relatives in the fatherland made. So we made sure that children knew what to look for, what to recognize. We would have World War II veterans that would talk to us in the schools. Not just that served in U.S. military, but veterans that served in the Wehrmacht or the Luftwaffe would come and talk to us in the schools about what they did, what they experienced during the war. How many of you had that? I'm willing to bet a lot of you 20-somethings, none of you. Because by that point, most of them were dead. And the ones that were still alive, I guarantee none of you would have listened to them because, oh, they're just boomers. You'd rather go off of that prepackaged narrative that's given to you by a troll from the NSA than the people that were there. Fucking morons. I need to move on here. But as you can tell, I have a severe heart on against Anyone who identifies himself as National Socialist or Nazi because you're a fucking idiot. You don't know a damn thing about what you think you're an expert of. You really fucking don't. Alright, um, last Friday, um, Kaz from the Italian Hillbilly and Bug Out Bushido were in a live stream. Now, it was brought up in there, can a civil war be avoided? If I remember correctly, it was kind of the question. And uh, Wired Tight was in there too. And uh, I think it was Wired Tight that said, we can avoid a civil war maybe if we have a national divorce. Now, I want to point out here that the national divorce stuff my suspicion is is being promoted by people in the government because what does that do it divides us it makes us weaker i've done videos on this in the past if we balkanize if we set up and uh, split up into separate regions that's not going to stop the powder keg from exploding that just gives them the means to take care of one little section before they move on to the next little section. So instead of dealing with all of us at the same time, the enemy can concentrate their forces against one location, take it out before they move on to the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. It makes their job easier for them, you idiots. Dividing up into separate regions, separate confederacies, separate states, based on ideology, will not solve shit. Okay? It won't. It just 
makes us weaker. What is our enemy constantly pushing on us 24-7 in every movie, every TV show, every news broadcast, every book, every newspaper, every cartoon, everything we see nonstop, advertisements and everything. It's division, 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 division. Get us fighting amongst ourselves. If you're white, you have to hate black people. If you're black, you have to hate white people. If you're Hispanic, you got to hate everyone else. That's what we're being taught nonstop. Oh, if you're Christian, you have to hate Jews. If you're Muslim, you have to hate Christians and Jews. You know, it's just constant. All the time you're being bombarded by this. The only way we can get through this is by staying united, staying together, staying these United States of America. These United States of America does not get defeated when things get bad. It's when we allow ourselves to be divided that we lose and we lose badly. Proof on that? Look at Vietnam. Look at all the fucking division that happened in the 1960s. And what ended up happening? We lost the fucking war. Now, the main reason we lost the war was political reasons. I will give you that. But we were defeated as a nation because of the division. God was trying to teach us a lesson, but most people didn't learn it. When things were going good in this country, we were unified. Things went damn good in Iraq and Afghanistan. When we started allowing ourselves to be divided again, that's when things started going bad for us on the battlefield. Everything started turning against us. When I went to the desert, I had a loaded rifle in my hands. And no, I wasn't a fobbit. I was a combat engineer. We were outside the fucking wire most of the time. Race, sex, none of that fucking mattered. What mattered was that the person next to you was wearing the same uniform and it said U.S. Army on their tag. You could rely on that person to back you up because they knew you, they could rely on you to back them up. Didn't matter where from the, in the country you came from. Didn't matter what color your skin was. Didn't matter what your fucking religion was. Didn't matter if one guy liked being fucked in the ass and the one next to him preferred fucking women in the ass. It didn't fucking matter. And you know what? Things went damn fucking good on the battlefield back then. Because we were united. It's after things that started to, the division bullshit fucking started here at home again. Shit that was gone. We hadn't seen it in decades and all of a sudden, oh, boom, here it is again. We have to be divided by race. Oh, we have to be divided by religion. Oh, we got to be divided by what party the United States were from. Once that shit started coming back out, Everything started falling apart for us. Fuck. Balkanizing and breaking up into separate little regions, separate different areas is not going to solve anything. All it will do is make things easier for the people that want to kill you. That want to make your children slaves. That's all it does. Now I'm going to black pill the fuck out of everybody. If you think balkanizing, you think uh, skipping the next election or voting in this ne next election, you know, voting harder, is going to solve anything. It's not. There's only one fucking solution to fix what is happening in this country. Civil war. Fighting on our own soil. <coughs> Something that many of us who've been overseas, seen what it's like, have done our best to try to avoid. Because we thought people in this country would be 
willing to see reason. But they're not. And the reason they're not is because of the propaganda being shoved down your throats 24-7. <coughs> you don't know what reason is. All you understand is division and supremacy, one group over another. You know, the only, when you get to that point, the only thing that solves it is war. You guys want it. Trust me, you're going to see it. And it is not going to be what you expect. It is not going to be like Call of Duty. It's not going to be like Halo. It's not going to be like your favorite war movie. Combat is loud. It's smoky. It's dusty. It stinks. The stinks of burning vehicles, of burning flesh. The stinks of the person who shit his fucking pants as soon as the first shots rang out. The smells of burning trash. The sounds of, of the rounds zipping past your head as you fucking move out of the way, try to find some fucking cover, and then the fucking rounds start landing around you and you change gun position again, you know, to maybe you can fucking put fire on where it's coming from. And then you're looking and looking, trying to figure out, well, where the fuck did the shot come from? I want to put rounds down range. I want to kill the son of a bitch. And then you... You don't always know where the fuck they are and then you start taking guesses you know it's like well maybe they're over there and you start putting some rounds over there and and you pray to God that while you're doing it you don't actually hit you know a fucking civilian I don't talk about my experiences in the desert for a fucking reason people okay I really don't I've tried to put a lot of that shit behind me. I don't want to relive that stuff. And I doubt many of us that were over there want to. That's why we fought so fucking hard to try to get people to see fucking reason. But no one wants to. Everyone instead wants to be the, the dickhead in charge. You know, their group in charge. You know, since you guys don't want to work with, with each other, you don't want to play nice with each other, the only fucking way to start to solve these problems this country has is war. So you better be fucking preparing for it, and you better be realistic. And I'll tell you once again, how expensive your gear is, how expensive and fancy your fucking rifle is, <coughs> you know... How much of a name brand scope do you have on top? How far your radio can reach ain't going to get you through the fucking battle. Your ass will get smoked by some shithead walking around with a fucking flannel shirt, some worn out work boots, carrying a 22 250 rifle, and he only has like 20 rounds of ammo loose in his pocket. He's going to take your ass out because that son of a bitch doesn't have many rounds, so he's going to be more careful for picking his fucking targets. While you're out there pretending that you're a fucking Navy SEAL in Call of Duty, running around with the best shit that's out there, thinking that, oh, it's going to give me plus 20 in armor, plus 50 in health. Well, as soon as that round hits you from that 22 to 50, you're going to have a negative 1,000 in health, and you're going to be fucking worm food. And then Mr. Flannel Shirt's just going to walk up, pick the equipment he wants off of you, and move on. And then after he has your equipment, he's still going to use the same tactics, but with better shit. To take out the next fucking moron that thinks he's playing a fucking video game. And those of us that served in the military, 
We're going to be off on the side watching through fucking binos as this is going on. Wait until we get enough of you together in one location and we're going to kill a group of you at the same time to save ammo. Why? Because that's what we would try to do. That's what we were trained to do. Kill as many of you fuckers with a single fucking shot as possible. If I got to wait two seconds or five seconds to kill a group of people, I'll fucking do it. I won't take that perfect shot to get that one asshole. I'll wait till he joins his fucking buddies and then I'm going to switch from a rifle over to a 203 or a fucking command detonated IED nearby. Hopefully they're close enough to it. Set that bitch off and take off to take out the group of them. Whether you like it or not, this country will be at war. And there's a lot of people that are still out there saying, oh, it's going to be five years from now, it's going to be ten years from now. Fuck no, I got a feeling it's going to be sometime within the next twelve fucking months. And I'm going to say this, if the leftists do start rioting this summer, and it only gets worse up to the election, if the patriots of this country don't fucking stand up to him this time. We have lost. We put our hopes in 2020 that law enforcement would back people up and would prosecute these people who burned America. Two billion dollars in damage from everything that was destroyed. Slap on the wrist, community service. That's the most a lot of them got. Most of them weren't even fucking charged. So this next time around, maybe we are going to have to do something. I agree, they burn their own cities and stuff. Let them burn their own cities. But we're going to have to make a showing this next time. Now, I'm not going to tell you to go out and do illegal shit. That's going to be your own personal choice. But I want to point out that the system is set up the way it is. Not to contain the leftists. Not to contain the radicals. The system is set up the way it is to control us. The people that followed the laws. So that the system can sit back when we defend ourselves, sit back and say, oh, you broke this law over here, but I was defending this person. Well, you still caused unnecessary harm to this person. You were only supposed to subdue him. The system is not set up to punish criminals. The system is set up to punish the law abiding. And I hope right now you're taking that black pill, shoving it down your throat with a fucking jug of whiskey. Because that's one that really fucking hurts. But something we all got to accept. I still believe there will not be an election. I really don't. When are they going to call it off? I don't know. Maybe they're going to play it out till... You know, like the week before and then, oh my God, there's, there's been some massive terrorist attack, cyber attack, fucking, you know, a nuke went off in, uh, in Boise, Idaho, whatever, okay? And then they'll use that as justification for, well, we can't have the election because of the national emergency. You know, maybe they'll do it then. I don't know. None of us know the future. All of us are looking at the same information, trying to figure out what's going to happen. Someone's going to be right out of the one million people coming up with theories. But as for which person that is, we're not going to know till it's happened. And then that one person will be writing books and doing interviews about how they were the only one who saw the truth. And it was so obvious, I don't know why other people didn't get it. Those people fucking piss me off. (coughs) 
All we can do is prepare. I know it's a broken record on this. Buy food, buy as much food as you can. Long-term storage. If you can't afford freeze-dried, get simple shit. Rice, dried beans, ramen noodles, soup pouches, jerky, fucking packaged nuts. Whatever the fuck you can get, get as much as you can. Because soon enough, Food is going to be their main weapon they're going to use against you. They're going to use starvation to get you to do what they want. You guys better be stocking up now, preparing for the possibility that next winter there won't be any heat. You're not going to have any natural gas in those lines going to your furnace. You're not going to have electricity. <coughs> to start the igniter in that furnace, let alone turn the fan on the blower to spread that heat through your home. So do you got matches? Reliable ones? How about firewood? You making sure to have kindling too that you can use to start it? Or are you maybe saving up some paper and that stuff, some old newspapers, old bills or something to use to start the uh, fire also? How about do you have a stove that you can actually put in your house, pipe through a window to heat your home? Do you have the concrete blocks to put on the floor? Do you have something to put underneath those concrete blocks and around the stove to prevent embers from setting fire to your goddamn carpet? Do you have the pieces cut to go over that window to run the pipes from the stove through to the outside? Do you have enough pipe to go outside and away from the house to direct the smoke away and any embers that may go through it? Do you have a spark arrestor to put on those pipes to prevent that from happening? Are you even considering this stuff? Do you have water? How much? You're supposed to have at least a gallon a day just to drink per person. That doesn't include cooking or washing yourself or washing other stuff. Do you have a means to filter it? I'm not going to mention weapons and ammo because that's something everyone wants to focus on. They think the more expensive the pew pew, the greater their chance of survival. I would say it's more of the skills you have with what you got is what matters. And no, I'm not talking some stupid ass $10,000 SEAL mindset course. And yes, we actually had a person in a militia unit I was in. He went to a special forces class on firearms and then we find out it was a SEAL mindset course he spent $10,000 fucking dollars on. A mindset course, not teaching them actual tactics, a mindset course. I would rather get trained by a fucking infantryman but then by someone who says, oh, they were a Navy SEAL for, for eight years. You know, I was on SEAL Team 69. You know, I, I was in, uh, in uh, Tungukistan and uh, I, I fought in... Uh, my Shlania in the Middle East, and uh, uh, I killed me some uh, some riskies over in uh, is uh, Azbezistan, and uh, you know, fuck you guys. Ninety percent of the people that you're going to meet that say they're special forces were not special forces. I'd rather be taught by a grunt, someone whose job was killing. Fuck sakes. Prepare food, water, medical supplies, a plan, and secondary plan, and tertiary plan. The enemy is not going to do what you think they're going to do. They're going to do something else. So you have to have multiple plans and you need to know them. 
Your plan may be to bug in. Well, what if the situation arises that you do have to bug out? Do you have a place to go to? Is it reachable? I'm not talking a place that you're gonna have to drive 24 hours to get to. Is it within an hour? Can you walk there? Can you walk there pulling a kid's wagon behind you with an in injured child in it? These are things that you need to think about. Everyone gets worried about, well, what will the next civil war look like? I think it's gonna look like this. I think it's gonna look like this. This next civil war in the United States is gonna be nothing like anything you've ever heard of. Terrence Pop over at Redonculus, an actual special forces veteran has said that. He says that after this next civil war, they're going to literally have to rewrite the books on guerrilla warfare. Because we, those of us that served, are going to take everything that we've learned, everything that we've studied, everything that we've experienced, we are going to build upon it, and we are going to create a new version of guerrilla warfare. Unbeyond anything any military planner can comprehend. Because we have all of history behind us to learn from. We know what worked for us overseas, we know what kicked our asses on at the National Training Center and the Joint Readiness Training Center and CMTC in Germany. We know what worked, what didn't work, and we're going to take that. We're going to adapt it. We're going to improve it. And then we're going to teach that to the ones who never served, who are going to come up with other ideas on how to tweak it a new version of guerrilla warfare. More efficient, more deadly than any seen in history. You need to make sure that your families are going to be able to survive through whatever happens. Do they know how to garden? Do they know how to take care of injuries? Do they know how to treat illnesses if they can't go to a doctor and get medicine? What herbs to give? What basic medical procedures to do? Do they know how to preserve water? Do they know how to collect water? Do they know how to tell when water is bad and you shouldn't use it and which water should, is okay but you should treat it? Can they identify which plants in your yard are edible and which aren't? I know I'm black, picking the, black pilling the fuck out of everything that you hold dear right now. But this is what you guys need to be thinking about. This is what I've been thinking about all fucking weekend. All fucking weekend. Just constantly in my head. What we think is going to happen won't be what's going to happen. They're going to hit us with some contingency we never even thought was possible. But we need to have plans that we can adapt to face that contingency. And the basics of those plans are food, water, medical supplies, means to stay alive, combat multipliers to make things a little bit easier, to survive longer. That's what you guys need to be doing right now. That's what needs to be consuming your thoughts. When you have free time, study, read. Read up on websites, read books, read manuals. You have extra cash, get extra food. Get an extra case of water to toss inside the closet because you never know. It might be a while between for some reason that you can't go out and collect water from that nearby stream. You know, the situation may be that you can't go out that morning. So you need to have an emergency water supply to tide you through. Maybe we end up in an actual fucking pandemic and all this shit, and you can't go outside to collect water because there's too many contagious people outside with real shit that will kill you. Like Ebola. Think about it. Plan it. Come up with solutions. Prepare for it.